I recently added Yuhi's civilization to my sequencing rack, and it's already become a staple. From here on, I'm going to call it CVZ because civilization is a mouthful when I'm talking and patching. In this video, I will be using CVZ in matrix mixer mode to demonstrate its usefulness for routing sequences and modulation. In the background, you can hear a simple pattern generated by one of my sequencers. And now I will turn up the volume on my second sequence. The CV outputs from my sequencers are routed to the first two inputs on CVZ. I have a random voltage generator and a tempo synced LFO routed to inputs 3 and 4. CVZ's first two outputs are connected to the volt octave inputs on my oscillators. Outputs 3 and 4 are connected to the modulation inputs on those oscillators. The sequencer gate outputs, which are triggering my envelopes, are also connected to CVA and CVB inputs on CVZ. I am using CVA to trigger the sample and hold for outputs 1 and 3. CVB triggers the sample and hold for outputs 2 and 4. This is important because it holds the output voltage when CVA or B are triggered, so that changes only occur when a gate is triggered. For example, here is what the sequence from my second sequencer sounds like if I deactivate the sample and hold for output 2. Since steps which don't have corresponding gates still change the pitch of the oscillator, the sequence won't sound right with sustaining notes. I have the quantizers activated on outputs 1 and 2 so that no matter what voltages I send to the inputs, the voltage going to my oscillators will always be within the same scale. This sequence is getting a little repetitive, so let's mix things up a bit. I'm going to introduce some variation. Nothing is currently routed to output 4, which is connected to the modulation input on my oscillator. As I increase the amount of signal from input 3, which is routed to output 3, you will hear that the random voltage which feeds the input gets sampled each time the envelope of the first sequence gets triggered. I can also send signal from an LFO to that output. If I were controlling a filter's cutoff with this output, I might also want to route the volt octave signal which controls the oscillator. Now I'll add some of the same modulation sources to my second sequence. Since the sample and hold for outputs 3 and 4 are triggered by different gates, the same modulation signals will affect my two sequences differently. You can get further variation by inverting one of the signals. I can also offset the outputs with fixed voltages. This is handy if you have a bipolar modulation signal, but want to connect it to an input which is expecting a unipolar signal. I can also transpose my sequences this way.
I like how this configuration sounds, so I'm going to save it. I'm going to save to preset 1. I have a bunch of configurations already saved, each of which give me a variation on my basic sequences. In this preset, outputs 1 and 2 are transposed. In this preset, my LFO is mixed together with the first sequencer's CV. The LFO is a tempo-synced ramp set to 4 bars, so it will cause the sequence to rise in pitch over that period. Combining a sequence with a slow LFO before routing through a quantizer is a great way to add melodic variation to a pattern. In this preset, I have my random voltage routed to my sequences in very small amounts. This introduces a random but still quantized variation to my sequences. In this preset, I swap the CV sequences. Input 1 is routed to output 2, and input 2 is routed to output 1. But since output 1 sample and hold is still triggered by CVA, and output 2 is still triggered by CVB, the sequences don't resemble their original selves. Again, another great way to add some variation to a pair of static patterns. Let's see where I can take this patch. 